year. Uh, this science lesson is on the coronavirus. I created a PowerPoint presentation that I will narrate through. And then there are a few questions to answer at the end. Let's get started. So this video contains some information about viruses in general, and then some specific information about the coronavirus. We will also cover how to increase your chances of staying healthy. Some interesting science regarding the spread of viruses is covered also. Um, a little bit on how testing works. And finally, there is some information about the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization and how you can get updates about COVID-19. Some scientists consider viruses to be a life form. However, since they do not have a regular cell structure and cannot reproduce unless they have infected a host cell, they are considered to be genetic replicators on the edge of life. Viruses are small. They're infectious agents that take advantage of all types of life forms, from animals and plants to microorganisms and even bacteria. In fact, viruses are about a hundred times smaller than bacteria. So how this works is first viruses attach to a cell and secondly the genetic material of the virus which is DNA or RNA enters the cell and instructs that cell to start making viral proteins and nucleic acids kind of hijacks the cell. Next the viral proteins and nucleic acids are brought together to make new virus particles. So then there's a whole bunch of new virus particles in the cell and these newly formed virus particles are then released. It breaks the cell open, the infected cell and that host cell may then die. There are over 200 different kinds of coronaviruses. The, the viral genes uh, undergo mutations and then new virus types evolve. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, is responding to this pandemic, a respiratory disease spreading from person to person caused by a novel or new coronavirus. The disease has been named Coronavirus Disease 2019, which is abbreviated COVID-19. This map shows the countries that have confirmed COVID-19 cases as reported by the World Health Organization, the WHO, as of March 21st, 2020. The virus spreads from person to person, usually between people who are in close contact with one another, like about within six feet or so. Uh, the respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes is what transmits the virus. People are thought to be most contagious when they are most symptomatic, which means they're the sickest, and that makes them that is a time when they're most contagious. Some spread might be possible before a person shows symptoms. Uh, there have been rep uh, reported cases of this occurring, um, but it's not thought to be the main way this virus spreads. Also, it may be possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or an object that has the virus on it, and then they touch their own mouth, nose, or eyes, but this is also not thought to be the main way the virus spreads. To reduce your risk of getting sick, wash your hands often, we've discussed, with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not readily available, use a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Cover all surfaces of your hands and rub them together until they feel dry. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Put distance between yourself and other people. This is especially important for people who are at higher risk, who are at higher risk of getting very sick. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze, or use the inside of your elbow. Throw used tissues in the trash. Immediately wash your hands then with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. You should clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces every day. This includes tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, handles, desks, phones, keyboards, toilets, faucets, 
and sinks. Help flatten the curve of spreading by doing these things that we just talked about. The slower the COVID-19 virus spreads, the more time is given to healthcare workers to respond. And then the better the outcomes will be for everyone. Much of the information we've covered so far came from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website. You might be wondering, how do coronavirus tests work? Exactly what are they detecting with the test? Antibodies? Actually, no. The test determines whether or not the virus itself is present. First, uh, this, the um, doctor or, or nurse swabs the, throws, the throat or nose uh, for a mucus sample taken from the patient. That sample is then sent to a lab where the sample is placed with reagents in a tube. The tube is placed in a machine that duplicates the virus's genetic material. This amplifies the genetic signal, which can then show if the virus is present or not. Here's an interesting bit of science. An article appeared on the Live Science website on March 24th, and it was entitled, Could the Summer Bring an End to COVID-19? The important factors investigated in the research covered in this article are warmer temperatures and higher humidity, both which may help to slow the spread. Um, the study was done on a, on a still relatively new coronavirus named SARS coronavirus 2, and they found that um, it didn't spread as efficiently in warmer or more humid regions of the world as it did in colder ones. The maps on the left and the graphs on the right from yet another study indicate that the arrival of summer and rainy season in the northern hemisphere reduced the transmission of influenza, which is another viral condition. Higher humidity air contains many water droplets. Those water droplets combine with airborne viruses, which then drop to the ground. Those viruses are no longer airborne, and so people do not breathe them in. For most of North America and Europe, the effect of humidity on the spread of the coronavirus would be negligible until about June, when humidity levels start to increase beyond 9 grams per cubic meter. Therefore, the impacts will be limited, at least in the northern parts of Europe and the, and the U.S., which don't experience warm temperatures uh, and high humidity until July, um, and that's even a, a short time window. So the, the chances of reducing the spread of COVID-19 in these northern regions um, would be limited. Dr. William Schaffner, an infectious disease specialist at Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, who was not part of the study, said, it's unreasonable, I think, to point to, uh, at this point, to expect that the virus will, quote unquote, disappear during our summer months. Still, he went on to say, I think it might give us a little bit of hope, though. Dr. Maria Van Kerkhove, an infectious disease epidemiologist with the World Health Organization, the WHO, said in a press conference on March 5th, we have no reason to believe that the vi this virus would behave differently in different temperatures. However, she then does go on to say uh, or suggest that seasonality could play a part in its spread eventually. In the northern hemisphere, we have the flu season, which is ending fairly soon. And the southern hemisphere, we have the flu season starting. And so it will be interesting to see what will happen in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. But to look at seasonality, you need to look at patterns over time. And we do need some of that time to be able to see what happens, she explains. Learning about science is important for everyone. It is interesting to see how scientists gather and analyze information that can then lead us to change our response to a situation, such as this viral pandemic. Lives can be saved in this way. Scientific discoveries have affected and have improved our lives. You might be wondering, how long will social distancing last? The answer to that is, nobody knows yet. The exact amount of time will remain indefinite until scientists can access 
and um, can access reliable data to track disease spread. And then they develop appropriate responses to the situation as it changes. For now, we need to stay home from work and school for some weeks. Only mingle with members of your own household, avoid visits with family and friends, and maintain at least six feet of space between yourself and the next person in line at the grocery store. The CDC increases the health security of our nation. As the nation's health protection agency, the CDC saves lives and protects people from health threats. To accomplish this mission, the CDC conducts critical science and provides health information that protects our nation against expensive and dangerous health threats. The World Health Organization's mission is to improve the quality of human life and health by carrying out programs to control and eradicate disease. It serves as a direct and coordinating authority for international health e efforts. These are two very important organizations. You can get uh, updates on the COVID-19, um, the spread of COVID-19 and where things stand at the CDC website, which I show here. Of course, you can just do a quick search uh, for CDC and find it yourself easily. So I posted this assignment uh, on Google Classroom, so you can access it there, uh, but you could do it now if you wanted to, just pause the video between questions. Please write these questions out on a piece of notebook paper. Please title the assignment, coronavirus lesson, number the questions, and answer in neatly written complete sentences, please. Start your sentences with capital letters and end with the period, proper punctuation. Number one, why are viruses considered to be on the edge of life and not simply classified as living things? Two, how does the coronavirus get transmitted from one individual to another? Three, how do we best flatten the curve of the spreading virus? Four, why is it important to flatten the curve? Five, how does high humidity decrease the chance of the virus spreading? And six, describe three ways to practice social distancing. That's it for today. Please take good care of yourself until next time.